Hello and welcome to a new Let's Dry series. We are drying out Pocket Space Empire Beta. The game is currently in early access on Steam and I'll include the link below. So what is Pocket Space Empire you ask? Uh, it is a Space 4X game um, and uh, from the Steam page is read it's an asymmetric space empire builder where you feel like an emperor, not a logistic officer. No micromanagement, grand scale, fast paced audiences, assassins, imperial court, disloyal, disloyal admirals. To me, um, this is feel is feel like a complex version of Risk, or like Crusader King in space. It is a really interesting game. I have to admit, I was going to play play it a little bit to get a feel of it. But then I end up spending like 10 hours uh, on the game and uh, play it to conclusion. Now let's go ahead and start a new game. And we'll start with the recommended Glory of Empire scenario. Uh, because it's a, it gives a better feel of how the game plays. So let's go ahead and hit quick start. Now this is the galaxy map here. Uh, we start right in the middle and we start out as the Federation. We start out in Terra. That's our home planet and our one and only shipyard. That is the other interesting thing about the game is that you only have one shipyard. You can only build ships here and you have to send your fleets out. And so the game start out with um, You have a um, a court, and you have a, an audience in the, n in the next few turns, and you have a button here for all the reports for this turn. So, as you can see down here, say beta, temporary graphics, and unfinished, and some of these uh, graphics are still placeholders, and uh, some of the stories are not quite f finished, but it's still very enjoyable uh, to play right now, at least to me anyway. Uh, you may have a different opinion on that. So let's see uh, how how things goes. So in your empire, you have your um, audience when uh, when that comes up, and then you have your court, and your court is how uh, determines how well everything goes. So you have your defense, uh, treasury, justice, internal affairs, foreign affairs, and protocol departments, and um, each of these. Uh, if you have competent people, uh, we'll give you uh, bonuses. And if you have bad people there, then you uh, end up with uh, with uh, bad events and all sorts of different things. Except in Department of Protocol, because it is irrelevant. This is just a place where you can promote officers and, and not officers, but courtiers and and. Um, and, uh, and people so that you maintain a balance because uh, not only that you have competence, loyalty and corruption you also have a faction for each of these courtiers and if the faction get out of balance it affects your stability of the empire so you need to both move competent people in place and also adjust different rankings so that your factions um, are, are also balanced and that is a trick in and of itself especially when they start dying off and uh, and be replaced with, uh, with new people and you get new political points every cycle I think it's like 11 years or so and you use those political points to move these guys around So we have a lot of competent treasury uh, or economist faction people. And if I were to go ahead and promote all of these guys to uh, top position, it would make the faction very, very um, powerful and would really affect our stability. So we really need to promote some of the other people up into 
position. We only have one traditional list, so we might just have to keep this guy here. I think I'll go ahead and promote this guy up to bring that up a little bit. So I promote him all the way up. Now stability is minus four instead of minus six as before. We do have this guy, this guy who's semi competent. So I'll move this guy up to the Treasury Department and promote him. I think I did something else. I was supposed to move this to a treasury department. Let's undo all that. Let's try that again. So promote this guy up twice. And then move this guy across to treasury. To justice and treasury and then promote. And then, since we don't have any more of these guys, we really can't do much about it. We might be able to find um, some more people at some point. But right now, our departments are fairly competent um, and corrupted. But that's the way it is right now. Um, we can improve some, some of these by edits and things. So um, every era, and I'll talk about era in a little bit, you can make um, more edicts and that hopefully will affect the way that your empire grows. So the first one will cost 100, the second one costs 1000, and the next one costs 10. And I assume that the other one after that will cost a lot of money. So I won more research of the beginning, so let's go ahead and do that. And then I think I'll go with new governor to have less corruption. And then if we have money, well, we'll do that, but I highly doubt that we'll get to that in this era. And then you have your intelligence. Uh, you can see how uh, the other empires are. Uh, you have the Hive, the Vix Collective, the Atarians League, the Zurari, the Koreans, the Tosetians, and the Ita, Irla. These are the people we are in contact with right now. So those are our borders. Um, and this is a summary of our empire. We have 50 planets. We don't have any imperial projects. This is the beginning era, and you can see it's a relatively peaceful uh, period. Uh, there's uh, rebel things that we need to worry about as well. So the, at some point they'll trigger, and we have to deal with them. So that's the empire tab. Uh, finances. Uh, you have tax, and you have budget. You can uh, dedicate some. Uh, some more. To, uh, right now we use up every uh, budget point but you can also spend more if you want and it will just cost you um, money. And then um, at some point there will be contracts that help with your ships and things. And these are the, the industry. Um, so again just like the description very very high level. Um, you can set priority for all these and so right now uh, people are low on food so we probably need more food things uh, and electricity we need more electricity thing and we have rare resource that will affect uh, those things at some point when you research that and then in research you have one two three four five uh, area of research construction and you just start queuing things and you have to research at least one of the lower tier beca before you can advance to the, 
the next tier. So some of these features are not implemented yet, like it say, fighter plus 25% damage is not implemented yet. Um, see, so since none of this is implemented, I will go ahead and just skip that altogether. And I'm not sure which one of these better strong armor I think is helpful, so let's queue those up. Plus two to all industry output things is really good. So let's add that. It'll take us a while to research all these. Then energy. The first one is just a theory. And then we can get a point defense. And then plasma converter with high energy capacitor. Shield overcharge plus uh, plus um, shield. So let's just go ahead and grab the thing that is implemented. And crystal power, we can use crystal to um, uh, do power thing so let's look see if we have crystal we do have crystal so let's go ahead and research that then and nuclear power plant we are short on energy so let's do that as well and then there's only one at the fourth level so let's queue that up electronics have to do that and then Tactical net. I don't know what that does, but good point defense is good. Just add research points, so let's queue that up. And let's just queue that behind it. Let's do some of those. We'll come back to them at some point. Biochemistry plus combat and research point, that's really good. City, better city, better ships. Cure that stuff up. And this also help with food, I believe. That's really good. And then this is not implemented yet, so let's go ahead and queue this up instead. So I think I focus on that first. And then we can add this Ambassador. More research is always good. Let's cancel this, do more research first, and go back and fill this out. And then let's just queue some of these up. So that's uh, the, uh, the the research. And you can have a, a single primary um, view where you, you have 50% of your research and then everything else gets divided equally for the rest. And then you can have a secondary focus view as well. And for that, let's focus on electronic because that will also add for research and everything else get even less research and then last but not least you have the fleet so the fleets are really outside of your control you can just control how they are being built um, for example the first fleet have five squadrons uh, one Two, three, four. Oh, you have four squadron. You can add uh, more to make uh, make more, and then you can tell them how they are um, composed of each squadron. Right now, uh, each squadron we want to have thirty frigates, ten destroyer, and ten battleships. I assume these are all the same. No, they are not.
so for me since it's easier if I have everything sort of the same way I will just go ahead and make all the composition the same and shift click to add 10 So I would basically make all the fleet the same, well all the squadrons the same anyway. And then we might specialize the fleets in various different capacity later. So these, the yellow number are the design numbers and the whites are what um, currently half in the in the fleet and this sixth fleet seems to be the heavy hitter and now actually it currently has just one squadron I'll add one more to it and the fifth fleet has no squadron or at two to it. that queue a lot of ship buildings here uh, the fourth fleet has 10 squadron the third have 11 the second has just two and the first have four so I'll create a few more squadron here and uh, it will take a long time for all these ships to be built a long time so I'll go five squadron each the reason I want these ships and it might may be a mistake because um, we actually have more ships than we can upkeep right now for free but it's always good to have ships or squadrons at least. So let's look at our border. We are bordering the hive down this corner. And these guys are pretty ruthless. So if you look at intelligence, they are not considered a um, primary race. However, if you don't take care of them, they can definitely spiral out of control uh, because they have games events that will cause them to multiply quickly and they will go crazy and over here we have the Vix Collective, we don't know much about them at this point up here we have the um, what are these guys? The Koreans. I think that's a home planet right there. And up here we have the Elath. And over here we have the Tosetians. And down here we have the Antarians League. So my focus right now is going to be trying to push into the Hive territory while uh, while we are still early in the game and try to gain as much territory from them as possible so we have a whole bunch of squadron over here not all of them have ships those are the ones we just created um, so I'll keep this one squadron back and start sending some of these down to the frontier so I send this one down here. It will take one, two, three turns to get there. Send this one down here. It will take however many turns it is to get there. Four turns. I will take this one. I'll just start uh, positioning fleets over here to start pushing out 
And if you look at the planet, you will see. Actually, let's go that set. You see that these planet in here, a regular planet, um, don't have to worry much about them. These planets out here along the border are classified as frontier worlds, and as such, they can be targeted by pirates. So we need to have fleets all around the frontier at all time. Otherwise, you risk being attacked by pirates. And we have two fleets over here. along this uh, border so I might actually just go ahead and use them right now and this is a minor race I believe right it's a minor race so I think I'll just go ahead and attack them as well and let's go straight over that way it'll take two turns to get there Look at our other fleet. And that's all we can do in the first turn. So let's go ahead and end the turn. So this will be a bunch of uh, events. We have a morale change. So the, we now have 84 total morale and 84% uh, uh, base morale and total is 121%. You can see that up here. And that helps uh, with our combats and things. And then you have exploration here. There'll be more kind of events coming up later on. But um, as far as exploration go, it's pretty much automatic. So the, um, you don't control that at all. And every turn, by default, you get two exploration events. Um, so do we find about, how about this planet and we'll just slowly find out more about the, the galaxy and you can't go there until you have explored it and this is a great thing about all these events is that there's a find button that show you exactly where things are so in the next turn we'll be attacking this planet so let's do that and as you can see we have battles uh, we have three battles actually. I didn't realize we have three battles. So we have a battle of a thorax, which is we attacking it. So on the battles, you can have um, either automatically resolve it or observe how it's being resolved. You don't actually involve in fighting the battle. You can watch it or you can uh, auto resolve. And so let's watch one. And you can see they have a uh, nine serpent glass um, frigate, eight Ceres glass destroyer, and one. Is it one? Yes, one uh, battleship, uh, Osiris glass battleship. We outgun them quite a bit, but they also have these um, planetary defense uh, things. They have alien blaster array, 31 of them. And they will shoot our ships too. So you can uh, just go to face by face, and uh, we destroyed a bunch of the, the serpent. And you can even look at the combat log. Um, we have four fighters attack our um, uh, destroyer, uh, not destroyer, the frigate here. And uh, we took care of it by our point defense. And you can uh, read this if you would like. It doesn't really uh, matter that much. Oh, Ma that matter is uh, how many ships remain after each, I believe. I guess uh, if you really want to, uh, you can see how each type of ship is either effective or, or ineffective against what, and then maybe you can uh, change the fleet composition. So we win that, and if, once you win, it'll, uh, or actually at the, every battle, it'll let you know exactly what happened. So the, we destroy everything and we lost two destroyer and nine of them need to be repaired. Uh, so the ship will actually go back to the shipyard, get repaired and get sent back down. And now the ground invasion has started and it'll take a while for it to finish. And especially when you attack like the hive or the uh, 
the other ones with very very heavy uh, def uh, ground defense so over here we are being attacked and uh, as you can see we have a squadron with 29 ships they have 35 and but we have 29 uh, uh, pl uh, planetary defense so we can just auto that and see what happened and we uh, the, the battle is not conclusively resolved they have seven ship left and we have 22 left uh, but we lost a bunch of our insulation as well so next turn they will uh, resolve the battle again and hopefully we will uh, win it then so this one we suffered much uh, much uh, a lot more damage we lost more ships on have 12 left so there's a couple things you can do you can go down here and um, go to the planet and you can go to administration and you can subsidize the defense and that would uh, cost you 800 credit once and it will double the infantry and it will double the defensive insulation triple the infantry and double the reinforcement speed so we'll go ahead and do that there and here as well since we do have uh, the money right now and what can we use the money for well one thing you can use the money for is to colonize planet if you have any uncolonized planets around here but right now our border is tightly uh, sealed against these guys and so we cannot uh, colonize anything you can only colonize things that are adjacent to you so uh, because of that we won't be able to colonize anything we just have to push out until we find a um, an area that can be colonized or we just have to really push against the empires so that's that turn we have some combat going on and then let's go ahead and end the turn so we have more battle in turn 4 and so the, um, over thorax we do not have any more space battle we just uh, have ground invasion and the ground invasion is automatic so the but you only have so many stormtroopers to invade so if you invade more than one planet at a time then it will progress slower on all the planets so over here we'll build more insulation over the last turn and we'll just all resolve that and wow we actually um, did not do well over there and over here let's hope we do better okay so they have six ships left that's six that's why they have six battleships and we only have five frigate that's bad so what I'll do is actually just send this fleet over here this fleet back this way to so swap the fleet and hopefully we won't get attacked over here over here let's see if we have any ships being built there is not so I don't want to send the, the very last squadron out I might need it um, for something so let, there's not much we can do about that um, let's go to the industry so electricity coverage um, has increased, food coverage has increased, so hopefully that will help with our uh, money situation and everything else. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Okay, so we took over a planet. And then, because we actually have two um, defensive fleet over here, I'll send both of them down this way. And let's go and go up this way with our new fleet. And again, we explore more and more. Oh, we find one that we can potentially colonize if we actually push through this way. So we can push through all the way here, then we can start colonizing. And then we have two battles. 
so we already won this one um, and then over here okay so they actually um, beat us there go ahead and send our fleet over Squab them again, even though there's zero ships that will replenish over time. Hopefully. And I guess they retreat over here. So that's the ground combat. We um, we are under invasion over here, so hopefully with, um, if we can control space, then we can repel that. And then we have an audience. So we... Um, get this event every so often, like I said, I think 11 turns or so. So do we have a little tip, we have a, a lot of cash, and we can spend money like in a financial budget. So we do have a little bit of cash there. Let's go ahead and do that, actually. Budget. Right now we gain a thousand credit a turn. So add to combat damage. Increase communication range. We don't need that yet. Add claims more signs and more projects and guard let's go ahead and focus on signs and now that we are over a budget point by two we uh, we spending 600 uh, credit per turn so now we only make uh, 500 or so a turn but we don't have any uh, money to um, uh, any other way to spend that money right now so that's good let's go back so that's that one so I'll just click OK don't do anything close that then we have storyline um, I was just to go to the cheap route so there's a storyline that's developing we have um, our galaxy being invaded by once every 10,000 turns or so with unknown alien uh, to eradicate everything in the galaxy so let's go ahead and check it and I'll look at the, the victory screen in a little bit um, so that's figuring part into that as well and another storyline there's a storyline to, to overthrow the governor so the, um, uh, as you can you can pause and read here if you, you would like um, there'll be three to five fixed storylines with uh, variants and and uh, this is um, I think going to be developed um, over the, the um, over the course of the game. Um, right now, there's I think there's maybe two or three that are uh, that are working. I don't know, uh, and some of them are not fully fleshed out yet. But it's still the fun to see those things. And then we have an event. Um, which court faction should benefit from our wisdom? So. I usually don't know exactly what to do about this. Uh, what I tend to do is take a look at how many that we have the most in here. So it looks like either the Economist or the um, Warlord. Um, and then I'll go ahead and and improve that. So let's go ahead and improve the Economist right now. So they just have better competence and loyalty. And then we have more option to uh, move them around. And then the treasury. This is a good event. They can have good or bad event. And we have more um, more funds. Let's go ahead and add it to scientific research because the early research point are really good. Foreign affair. This is a bad event. Our ambassador to um, um, so we can lose uh, prestige and have the rebels uh, be more ready and have worse relation I don't want that just because I don't want to fight um, on all fronts and we can fight all the court, court, uh, courtiers in uh, the foreign affairs department which are in this department here if we do that these guys are pretty bad we'll lose two of these um, gene technologists guys and we have two left so we can try and 
promote them somehow. Ugh. I hate doing that. So we can uh, make a festival at cost of 5,000 credit. We don't have it, so we're running a deficit and we'll lose prestige every time we are running a de deficit. Diplomacy. And we make great expression. Then we can. Uh, we don't have the money, and I'd rather not spend that money, so let's just increase influence over this race. Then we have some espionage. Uh, they are, the Vix Collective is over here somewhere. Um, we can do all these different things, and just in case we are attacking them, let's again access their whole, uh, whole structural plan so that we can have an advantage over them. And each new era thing we have, we can review of government officers. And let's go ahead and do the governors right now. And then we can focus diplomacy on some guys. So the purple guys over here are probably somebody. We only have one planet bordering them, though. Hmm. There's not many of these guys over here. Oh, well, might, might as well keep that one point. So this is part of the Interior League. So let's focus that good relation with them. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. And here we have our first contract. So at they can add five percent to all ship hit points and we can either sign it at a thousand credit and ten per turn or seven hundred and twenty per turn. There's twenty five turns left in uh, the era. So if we do this we spend five hundred uh, two hundred and fifty extra So the so that's worth doing this. So we, we basically gain um, is fifty credit cheaper than doing that. Let's do that, and then we have more a visiting admiral. This guy is not very competent but loyal. So we can fire him, and I think I will. And when you do that, um, all the, the, as you can see in the, the text, all the uh, officer, we have a 5% chance of losing loyalty. And I have not talked about officer yet, let's do that real quick, and then we can call this an episode. So each fleet have a bunch of officer, um, and this is the guy that uh, that we just tell to, to, to fire here, and, um, and they will get promoted by however rules that they um, they pick and if the loyalty is really low then you can install a, uh, a political officer to help boost the loyalty and they're not very competent because they're not military people so that is the audience and things oh I was talking about the victory condition so if you click the victory condition you need to achieve um, six of these in order to win and if you lose your all your prestige, or if you lose the capital, then you lose. Um, so you would just have to work on all of these uh, uh, slowly. Right now we have 50 planets, so I think the first one that we we might get is still like 100 planets, or so it will take a long time. So go ahead and go to the next turn and see the effect of all these things. So we have our first parasite event. Um, the parasite have woken up. So the parasite, I believe, are over here. These are light green over here, and they are quite powerful. Uh, good thing we do have a buffer over here of all the other aliens races, but they might be able to push right through and come for us. And if that's the case, then we might be in trouble. So what else do we have? We have a a whole bunch of movement. Um, 
uh, events I'm not really worried uh, about that and then we lost the prestige because we don't have enough money we'll do we'll continue to do so for a few turns while we are catching up there because we just spent a whole bunch again we have two different exploration uh, events we have two battles so we have a battle over here that we are attacking let's just auto it uh, because um, we can see what happened there the observe uh, just show you the face by face and you can watch it log and other than that I, uh, there's not much uh, reason to do so if you have superiority over there and then I'll also go ahead and move one of these fleet up to here and the next turn I'll move this over here and uh, continue to push in that direction let's go back to the battles if I can click on a button it will help and then we're being attacked over here again but this time we actually have reinforcement so let's go ahead and auto that as well so we actually lost a bunch of ships wow we lost three um, frigates but a whole bunch of them need to be repaired and, but we destroy all their fleet which is good so now our border are sort of secure again the other thing I can do is I can go to a fleet and reorganize all these squadrons because you can see that they have unbalanced uh, squadrons here except I don't want to send ships back to this squadron being built but we can hit the reorganize button and it will try to flesh out all those squadrons uh, to be roughly the same size um, but in the meantime we have fleets down in this corner so let's go ahead and use them so let's take our 47 ships and move them out this way and then 53 ships move them out this way and 71 ships move them this way and then we also have a 85 ships things over here let's get this one so the um, just like risk um, any of these um, the less frontier planets you have the less fleet you need so right now if I can take this one then I don't need this fleet anymore I can use that as an offensive fleet and so the, the trick is just to uh, go to the graph and make sure that you have um, the least exposure as possible so that you can concentrate your fleet and take them out so let's uh, do the, 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 the one thing about um, that we always do with the 4x game is just one more turn let's get one more turn in and uh, and see what happened so we actually have a whole bunch of battles you can automate all battles if you want but I usually want to see what's going on with these so we have a an attack at Figu over here with 29 ships and they have 20 so they are actually actually attacking us we do have defensive uh, installation so we should be okay we are attacking being attacked uh, by the hive at Rodante, I think no Rositan, Rosinante, and we should be okay here as well. They have two fleet attacking us there. We've been attacked at Veron by ten ships. We should be okay there as well. Those are very small fleet attacking us, and we are invading over here. And because of that, since I actually have these ships, I thought I sent one squadron up I did not so let's do that this again and the next turn we'll attack that sorry for the ADD thing but let's go back and we are actually fighting them over uh, Tare over here so we took them out but we actually lose 25 uh, no we lost 7 uh, frigate and two destroyer. Let's go to the next set of battles. We are taking over here. 
Oh no, they're attacking us over here, we should be okay because we do have insulation. We are attacking them over here with hopefully superior number. Nope, we do not have superior number. So we'll retreat this one. We attack we are being attacked over here. That's fine. We are attacking over here and we took that over. We are attacking over here and we took that over as well. And as you can see, the ground invasion is only 5% for these and it will pro proceed very slowly. Because if you click on these planets, um, they have a lot of infantry, uh, the hive here. They have a lot of infantry. And. And it'll just take a while. And also, we are spreading ourselves very thin. So let's look at our research real quick before we do that. So we researched cloning in the um, biochemistry view, which is this one. So now we should get 3% more research and 10% more ground combat, which is great. So the next one is reactive armor. I think I'll focus on that still because more hit point for ships is good. Uh, if we have ships over here, we have a few squadron small amount of fleets. Um, our ships, I'm not going to disperse them out just yet. We'll let them build up a little bit more before we send them out to the front front line. And then let's call it an episode here. Thank you very much for watching and hopefully I will see you again in the next episode where we will continue to expand our border and becomes the ultimate ruler of the galaxy or something like that, or get crushed, we'll never know. Thank you again, see you next time, bye bye.